Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. Breaking news alert. The Cass County Jail is starting to get results back from mass COVID-19 testing and says 10 people have tested positive. Five of the positive tests are from staff and five are from inmates. All of the people who tested positive didn't show any symptoms. The Cass County Sheriff says plans are in place to limit the spread and the testing was done this past Tuesday and authorities expect more results to become available over the next few days. We have new information on coronavirus in the region. North Dakota saw its largest single day increase in cases since the virus reached the state. 134 more people have tested positive for COVID-19 bringing the total to 2,229 confirmed cases. Two more deaths have been linked to COVID-19, both men in Cass County with underlying health conditions. One in his 70s, the other was in his 90s. 1,340 patients are now listed as recovered. Positive cases have now topped 18,000 in Minnesota, and the death toll has gone over 800. The state is reporting a total of 18,200 cases, an increase of 539 from the day before. The death toll increased by 32 to a total of 809. 663 of the deaths happened in long-term care facilities. 12,488 people are listed as recovered. And we have new information on the attempted murder earlier this week at the West Acres Mall. Court documents say the suspect called his victim and threatened to kill him just one minute before running him over. Witnesses and a security camera saw the victim walking across the mall's parking lot before being hit by Jason Anderson's vehicle. The victim fell to the ground, and while he was trying to get back up, Anderson sped up and drove over him. Anderson reportedly then got out of the car and punched and kicked the victim several times. That man is now at the hospital in stable condition with multiple serious injuries. Anderson is currently in the Cass County Jail. Taking that live look outside on this Thursday afternoon, we had some sun and now the clouds, well, they've came back in and the wind, it's always been around. For what we can expect for the rest of our forecast, let's head on over to First Alert Storm Team meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli. And then you, Jordan. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, we had a mild start this morning. We do have a strong southerly wind, and we had some sun this morning, but more clouds have moved in. Here's a look at the low temperatures from this morning. Low temperatures uh, into the mid to upper 50s in most areas, and we rebounded nicely. We're into the low to mid 60s, maybe some upper 60s, up and down the Red River Valley. Winds uh, are from a southerly direction. Uh, around uh, 20 to 30 miles per hour, some gusts up to 40 miles per hour. We'll keep windy conditions going through the afternoon. Sun as you make your way into northwestern Minnesota, otherwise partly to mostly cloudy skies. And there is uh, just a chance of some showers or some sprinkles developing, especially Devil's Lake down toward Jamestown south toward the South Dakota border. Most of us staying dry, maybe some isolated uh, showers, maybe some rumbles of thunder in our western counties. But look for a high getting into the mid, maybe some, up, some upper 70s across the region. We'll have an update on that full seven-day forecast, including the possibility of maybe some severe weather this weekend. Details coming up later in the newscast. No. All right, thank you, Justin. New at noon, the North Dakota BCI and the Eddy County Sheriff's Department is looking for a man wanted in connection to an ATM theft case. Authorities say this man up on your screen right now walked into the all hours lobbies of two banks in New Rockford and Carrington and stole money from the ATM. Deputies aren't saying how much money was stolen or how the man broke into the ATM. The burglaries happened early yesterday morning. Now, if you have any information about this guy, you're urged to call authorities. That number on your screen as well, 701-947-5515. Authorities in North Dakota are still searching for the driver who hit and killed a teenager with their car and then took off. Now, this is a picture from near the scene. Minot police say it happened last night around 1030 in the city. The victim is an 18-year-old man. His name is not being released. Police are searching for a red or a burgundy pickup. If you have any information on this, you should call your local law enforcement. Two men are sitting in jail for a police standoff in Moorhead that shut down part of a neighborhood. It all went down around 5.30 yesterday evening. It started with a call from someone who said a man had pointed a gun at them at a home in the 400 block of 16th Street South. Officers had guns drawn and ordered people inside that house to come out. 31-year-old Courtney Smith was arrested for domestic assault. 21-year-old Travon Spears was arrested for assault and possession of stolen property in relation to the threat involving a gun. 
Fargo police say one man was arrested for a DUI after a rollover. Emergency crews were called to an accident on the corner of 7th Avenue and University Drive overnight. A driver involved in that accident tells us that one of the vehicles flipped after being rear-ended. You see it right there. Police say 36-year-old Stephen Colbert was arrested for DUI and DUI refusal. The driver of the other car involved was also cited for speed care required. More than 2.4 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits last week, bringing the total to nearly 39 million people since the pandemic started. However, this marks the seventh week of declining first-time claims since the record of 6.9 million back in late March. Despite the declining numbers, last week's applications for jobless benefits are still well above anything the U.S. economy has seen before. As all 50 states slowly reopen, the focus is now on protecting Americans who have not gotten sick. That means moving quickly to contain localized outbreaks. Houses of worship are among the places cautiously opening up again. David Begnod brings us more. Take New Jersey. Several Baptist congregations say they will defy the governor's executive order to keep gatherings to 10 people or less. The church cannot stay closed. It's wrong. It's unconstitutional. In Minnesota, Catholic and Lutheran leaders also say they will ignore their governor's order and start holding large-scale services next week. Some have already started defying state orders. On Wednesday, police dispersed a large crowd gathered at a New York City synagogue. Around the country, states continue to reopen at their own pace, with Connecticut becoming the last of the 50 states to ease restrictions. Some businesses, like jewelry stores and restaurants, open for the first time in more than two months. This is the first feeling, I think, that we have had of normalcy. In Michigan and Illinois, we saw examples of what can happen as workers start to return to work. I just don't feel it's safe enough yet. Just days after reopening assembly plants, Ford temporarily shut down factories in both states because three employees tested positive for COVID-19. Both plants were set to be back in operation Wednesday night, but some workers are still worried. All these people was crowded in, on top of each other. And there are new concerns this morning for frontline workers at grocery stores. The United Food and Commercial Workers Union says at least 68 grocery employees have died from COVID-19 and more than 10,000 have been exposed or infected. Several chains, including Kroger, are now ending hazard pay for their employees, like Raquel Solario. I don't know why they would be taking our hazard pay away. So Kroger, for the 460,000 associates you have, please do the right thing. David Begno, CBS News. Kroger says it has already issued $700 million in hazard pay plus bonuses to employees, but says it will continue to make decisions to prioritize their health. Coming up here at noon, how a national gardening campaign is looking to stock pantries across the country. But next, Justin Fanfarelli is in with a check of our forecast to see if today will be a good day to get out in the garden or not.